Today we are going to be taking a very advanced look at Motion 5 building a callout. It might not look like much on the surface, but the amount of stuff you are going to learn in this tutorial is insane. So stick around. So we have our project browser. If you don't have the project browser, you can push command option N. go ahead and select the final cut title. And then you can leave your settings at 1080, 2997, whatever you like to work with. Push open. We first want to delete the title background and the type text here. That is so that if we apply any effects to this particular title, the underlying layers in Final Cut Pro will not be affected. The first thing we want to do is select our rectangle tool. You can do that with R or click that button there. We will go ahead and create a rectangle. We'll go into our inspector, go to our geometry, and let's just go ahead and actually set it to 500 just to make it nice and clean. And then we will disable the fill and go over to our width and set that to 12. I find 12 looks really nice. Let's also go to our joint and set that to squared off edges. After that, go ahead and get your text tool. Click and if you push option and eight, you will get this nice fancy little dot and we can just do spec one and then we'll push option eight again, spec two. And you can do as many of these as you like. I'll just do three for this tutorial. From there, go to your rectangle and we want the rectangle to always follow the motion of our text. So if we go on up to our behaviors, we can go down to basic motion align to, and we will drag our specs into this well here. So now this rectangle will always follow the motion of our text. Now, as it is, we could just leave that, but let's say that we want to add or take away more specs and we want the box around it to match the size. Well, to do that, go ahead, select your rectangle, go over to the geometry settings, go down to size, and we are going to link the size of our box to our text up there. So if we go to add parameter behavior, link, drag in our spec, we'll select compatible parameters, object attributes, size, and we'll add that to the width. So now the width of the text is driving the width of our box. Now it's definitely way too tight for comfort. So let's go ahead and change the offset to something like a hundred pixels like that. So it just has a little bit of room to breathe. Let's go ahead, rename this to be link X and then we'll push command D to duplicate it and we'll change it to link Y here. Then we can select our compatible parameters, object attributes, size, height. Then we can change our target parameters to object, shape, size, and height. So now this height is following the height of our text and we can set an offset of 100 pixels. Now it's looking a little strange. That is because I, I added an accidental extra space there. So I just delete that. So now we have our text that moves around and we can add extra options here, spec four, just like that, and it matches perfectly. So from here, things are going to get complicated. The first thing we wanna do is add in a little line coming off the corner of our box. So to do that, we will go ahead and select our Bezier tool. We'll click in this corner and just create a line just like that. Push enter, jump on over to your shape settings disable the fill and find your outline and set that to the same width as the original box. Let's say we want the one end of this to be movable with a circle on it and one end to be attached to this box at all times. Now things get complicated in motion when you want to move multiple points of a single line, but I'm going to try and break it down as easy as I can. First, let's just add in a circle here and we'll just hold shift so it's perfectly symmetrical. We'll disable the fill on that and we will set the outline width to 12, just like everything else. And we can move this down to that line. Okay, so the first step to moving this line is we need motion to think that this line is being tracked like in a regular object. So to do that, we'll go up to behaviors. We will go down to shape and we will select track points. Now, it doesn't give us the option to select track A or track B for each of these dots. So to do that, we actually need to bring in an image file and then motion will say, oh, okay, I need to be able to track this image and it will give us tracker points. So to do that, push command I and I've created this little control point PNG 
Um, I will have a download in the description, but you can just literally make this out of whatever you want. This is just easy for me to look at and know what it is doing. Then we're gonna go to our behaviors, basic motion, align to, and we're gonna drag in our rectangle. So then you will see you've got align control point and we have to the rectangle. So we want it to be to the lower left hand side of our rectangle. And you can actually offset it a little bit with this uh, on screen control here if you want to do that as well. Now go to your track point, drag in your control point and you will see now we have track one and track two. Track one is the first point you made, track two is the second point. So go ahead, disable track two, change the transform type to attach to source and now if everything is working according to plan, which we really hope it is, this box, when it moves, will bring that part of the line with it. So that is perfect. So now let's attach the line to this circle here. We're going to need to duplicate our control point. We'll change our line to from the rectangle to this circle here. And now we want the center of our control point to be the upper right of the circle. And we can actually offset this a little bit so that it's in the right position for us. Then we will go to our track points, duplicate that with command D, drag in our second control point, which I'm going to rename really quickly just for clarity's sake. Then we want to disable the first control point and enable the second control point. We'll wanna make sure our transform is attached to source and now when we move this circle, that line will be following the circle. We can now hide our control points. And so now this line is attached to our circle and it's also attached on the other side to our rectangle. So the last complicated thing we need to do is add on-screen controls in Final Cut Pro for this circle here. Go ahead, go to your library, go to your generators, find the color solid and just add that into your layers. You can disable the color solid and we can rename it to be the controller. Then we'll go up to our filters, distortion, black hole, and black hole just has this one really simple control. Just drag this control to where you want to control this circle from. So if you want it right in the center, you could do that. I'm gonna put it actually just above it so that I can see what is in the circle. Then from here, we are going to select our circle go to our inspector, properties, find our position, and you are going to want to link the X and the Y values of our circle to our black hole. So to do that, click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, link, drag in your controller. We want to change it from properties, transform position dot X to filters, black hole, center X. And then you'll see it shoots it way off to the side here. To fix that, we will set an offset of negative 0.5. So we will actually link X here, we'll rename that, and then we'll duplicate that and rename it to link Y. We will do the same step. So compatible parameters will go down to filters, black hole, center Y, and have that affect the transform position Y. So every time you do this, you have to do an offset of negative 0.5, and just like that, our black hole is actually directly in the center, which is not quite what we want. I just realized that I made a mistake. I want it to be above this. So to do that, let's go ahead and affect our offsets just a little bit um, in the Y direction here and look at our black hole. It's at the top. We're getting close. Let's just do, let's do negative 0.6 and hopefully that should, yep, that sets it perfectly. So now our black hole is moving the circle. So that is great. We now have a movable circle, um, but it will not show up in Final Cut Pro unless we go over to our black hole and push publish OSC, which stands for on-screen controls. So now this on-screen control is going to show up in Final Cut Pro. So let's quickly add some animations to this whole thing. So what I like to do is select our spec titles. We'll go to our behaviors, text basic, and I actually really just like how the fade characters in left to right looks. It's just nice and clean. And if you do some of the other ones, sometimes the 
uh, the rectangle shape can get all crazy. So this is just a nice simple one because this tutorial is going on way too long. Okay, so from there, let's go ahead and select our rectangle and I like to go to behaviors shape right on and this is just a nice clean animation that draws the outline here. And if I'm, I'm gonna select the right on feature and I'll push O right at the end of the fade characters in so it completes right at the same time and just looks nice and clean. Then let's go to our Bezier. We'll go to behaviors, shape, right on. And we want this to also draw on itself. We'll shorten the length down and we'll have it shortened down to the point of right where they intersect here. So just move forward a frame or two, push O so it trims it down. So now it's going to start right as they connect, but I want it to write from the other side. So to do that, we're gonna go select our right on, go up to our parameters here, and we are going to change the direction to reverse. So now it's actually drawing from the circle to the corner. And the last thing is let's get our circle to draw on. So we'll go to behaviors, we'll go to shape, we'll go to right on, and we can shorten the length of that considerably to just a, a small amount of time and whoops, I accidentally added it twice. So just like that, now it's drawing on very quickly and we have our spec sheet here. Perfect, let's go ahead and publish some of these parameters to Final Cut Pro. So if we select our rectangle, we could go to our shape and we could publish the roundness so that we can get some round corners if we like. So we can click publish that. We could go to the style and we could actually publish all the fill settings. So we'll publish that, the color mode, the color of the fill, the opacity. And then we could also do that with the outline, the color, brush, opacity, the width. And now if we go up into our project, we can see all of our settings here and you can move these around by clicking and dragging them around as you like. You can also rename them with, uh, if I want to fill a rectangle, we can double click on it and that will let us rename them. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this looks in Final Cut Pro. So we'll push Command S and we'll just call it Spec Sheet, I guess, or something like that. And you can put it in whatever category you like. So I'll just put it in the Final Cut Pro and publish. Now, if we open up Final Cut Pro, Okay, so in Final Cut Pro, we can just go up to our titles here, look up our new one, our spec sheet, and drag that over the top here. So now you can see we have our on-screen control, which I can drag over that car. We could also move our text here, so I'll just move it up there, put it over our car here, and I probably should have added some scaling features. That's for another tutorial. Let's say I want to just put these specs maybe down there. There we go. Um, so now let's go ahead and track this. So we'll just select our transform tool, go to the tracker and use the brand new object tracker found in Final Cut Pro. We will go ahead and push analyze. This will do its thing and it does it really, really fast, which is awesome. So now we have everything tracked on and it's sticking to that car, which is awesome. If you don't feel like going through all the trouble to build your own callouts, I strongly suggest you check out the plugin M callouts for my friends at Motion VFX. First of all, their calls look way better than mine and they come with a built-in tracker that uses the Mocha tracking engine and that tracking engine is dang good. That's all I gotta say. If you enjoyed this super advanced look at Motion 5, I strongly suggest you check out this tutorial about parameter behaviors. And if you are a patron, you can download this call out right now. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.